this is just out of the oven. It is a no-knead sourdough bread. First time I've tried making a no-knead bread with the sourdough culture. And what follows here is the process that I went through to bake it. And of course the very last shot is cutting this and tasting it and seeing whether or not it is a decent sourdough loaf. I hope you enjoy the video. I'll show you how I made that loaf of uh, sourdough bread, which I think I'm fairly satisfied with. I've been making my own sourdough starter. This is the first time I've used it, but I've been making it now for it takes about a week or so, six days or so anyway. I won't bother to go through the whole process of making that. There are better illustrations online than I can give you. I'll put a link down below with the list of the ingredients and whatever that I've used in the recipe here, but also a link to the site that I used to make my sourdough starter. It's the King Arthur Flour site. Um, they obviously are also going to promote their products. They talk about using various King Arthur flowers and whatever to make it with. Well, I didn't have King Arthur flour. Uh, they want you to start with either pumpernickel or whole wheat. I didn't have either one in the house, so I started with a multigrain, which is whole wheat actually with uh, you know other grains and seeds added. It seems to have worked okay. Anyway, I have here 200 grams of my sourdough starter. And what I'm going to be doing is the no-knead uh, bread method, which I have a couple of other videos here on, so I'm not really going to be showing anything in too much detail here, but give you an idea of how this works, I guess. That is the sourdough starter there, 200 grams of it. This is 450 grams of just uh, white bread flour a teaspoon and a half of salt and a quarter teaspoon of uh, dry yeast. And to that you add 375 grams of just cold tap water. And that basically is the ingredients. There's no kneading involved with no knead bread, obviously. And all you have to do is stir the ingredients together so that all of the flour has become wet. In this case with the added 200 grams of, of the uh, sourdough starter. That's probably mixed well enough. Impeccably clean hands here, as Julia Child always said. Now, the easy part of this process is you put a cover on this. If I knew what I did with the cover, I guess I sorry about that. I had to go look up the cover. I had buried it under some other stuff here on the cupboard. This container is actually meant for proofing bread, and it's a two liter or two quart size, and I find it just a good, the good size for making one loaf of, of no knead bread. But you could do this in anything with a tight cover or a bowl that you cover with plastic wrap or, or whatever. Now it sets in a warm place for 12 to 15 hours and slowly develops its own gluten and, and slowly rises. I used to tell people in one of my videos, I think, that you could put it in the oven, with the oven shut off and just the oven light on, and that would uh, provide enough heat. And uh, I really, I didn't think, I thought all ovens were like mine with just one light bulb, but I think it was Brendan in Northern Ireland told me that uh, his oven has two light bulbs, and of course that would be twice as much heat. But anyway, any warm room, room at room temperature, or a, like I say, an oven with one light bulb for 12 to 15 hours, and then we will come back and carry on with the process. Well, this is about 13 hours later, I guess. And as you can see by the looks of the container here, things rose quite well. And also you can see the nice structure of, of holes. That's the, that's the gluten that developed. The next part of the process is to turn this out on a floured board 
cardboard countertop or something. Trying not to be too rough with it, but uh, it's going to deflate some at this point. Just turn it over itself a couple of times here. flower on top so the plastic wrap won't stick and just cover it lightly with plastic wrap and it rests like that for 15 minutes. It has rested its 15 minutes. Remove this plastic wrap and sometimes one of these a dough cutter, board scraper, whatever you want to call it, comes in handy at this point because it has adhered a bit, but not too badly, I guess. This dough, I think, is a little bit wetter than I usually have with the new knead bread, but that's all right, too. Let's add a little flour to get rid of the, the tackiness. What I do next is I put it on um, a cookie sheet or I have a peel as well. well this is what I'm... <laughs> Okay. And I put it on uh, parchment paper. And you'll see when I transfer it into the uh, Dutch oven why I prefer to use the parchment paper. Covering the top of it with flour because it's now going to have a tea towel put over it. And this is again put in a warm location for, for two hours. Um, 30 minutes before you're ready to put it in the oven, you preheat your oven to 450 degrees with the crock, the crock pot, with the uh, Dutch oven in there. And uh, then you place this inside the Dutch oven, and I'll show you that process when we get to it. But right now, it's going to rest for, for two full hours. This old Dutch oven has seen better days. <laughs> it's only ever been used for the no-knead bread. Um, normally when you use a Dutch oven in the oven or on the top of the stove or whatever, it has a lot of liquid in it. So that keeps the temperature of it down to, well, at most 100 degrees Celsius when the liquid boils. It's mostly water, I guess. But in a 450 degree oven, as you can see, the uh, enamel has cracked on it in several places. Anyway, that has been in the 450 degree oven for a half hour, preheating. And this is why I like the parchment paper. You can just drop that in without any problem. Cover back on. And it goes back in the 450 degree oven for 30 minutes. At the end of 30 minutes, you remove the cover and leave it in the oven an additional 15 minutes to brown the surface. So I will bring you back when this is out of the oven. Another thing that I like about the parchment paper, it makes it very easy to get it out of the Dutch oven without burning your hands. And it doesn't really stick to it. It comes off quite easily. There's only one use, I'm afraid. It gets pretty scorched in the process. But anyway, I think that's looking fairly decent. I would like to have seen a little more loft. I'd like to have seen it raise a little higher than it did, but if it tastes anything like it smells, it's going to be quite good. There's a definite sour dough fragrance coming off of the baking process here. Anyway, I have to wait for oh, an hour to an hour and a half before I cut it. Um, a lot of people feel, I guess, that that's just because the dough is, the bread is still too soft and, you know, you'll destroy the loaf cutting it. That's part of the truth, yes, but if you talk to any professional baker, they'll tell you that it is still cooking. 
until it has cooled down quite a bit the interior of the bread is is still in the cooking process so we'll come back in a bit and give this a try as they say the proof of the pudding is in the eating so we'll cut this open and see what we've got here it's still a little bit warm i just lost patience had to cut into it that has a pretty good interior structure some nice holes and it's nice and soft my favorite part is the crust so that's what I'll take talk with my mouth full. I like the no-knead bread anyway. It has a great texture and a great crust on it. But you can definitely taste the sourdough. Very good. I hope you give this a try. I think it's the first time I was ever really successful making a sourdough bread. I've tried in the past and didn't like uh, well, the starter that I developed. It didn't have the right sourdough taste to me but this this is quite good and I think perhaps as I continue to use the the culture it will continue to grow some and hopefully improve well thank you very much for watching